Thus, what we need is always coincide with uh, uh, what our uh, partners need in there are, Ukraine. There are disagreements, of course, and uh, For Ukra example. Ukraine is, you know, Ukraine carries the entire cost of the war, whereas our partners uh, are carrying financial, but not necessarily human, you know, not necessarily, for sure, not, you know, citizens of uh, Europe, uh, unless they volunteer in Ukraine, and that's their own decision, but citizens as the members of the countries, they don't participate, they're not drafted, they don't die, their infrastructure is not being uh, killed, their children uh, is not being destroyed, their children are not being um, moved to Russia and uh, uh, you know, essentially Russified, that's not happening. So we have a much stronger incentive for all of this to end because we're fighting for our culture and we want to end the war and the um, and uh, uh, hostilities against us and uh, the murder of our people and genocide against our people as soon as possible. But that also creates a very specific uh, uh, conflict or tension because for us, it's about preserving our culture. Oh. And so when we say the war should end, it should end on those terms which will protect us and prevent from the continuation. Or, or, or another war in the future, several years from now. And it will protect, um, and we will get back those territories, but the language about which I occupy, but the language of territories is, is, <coughs> is unfortunate in my view. Because we're, we're actually going to talk about people who are being tortured, raped, murdered right now in occupied territories. So we want to bring our people to save them from Russia and pr protect our culture. Mm. <coughs> so, um... I want to talk with you about investments. Uh, all the assistance is very important, but private investors maybe. Why not? It's very important for, for the Ukraine. And what should be done first so that investors can move from intention, intention to invest in Ukraine to real action? And can we say that investments in Ukraine, this is the additional safety factor for the Ukraine. So what we have seen is that, I mean, at the Kiev School of Economics as a yeah. research institution, what we have seen is that investment is happening in one specific sector. This is military tech, where the innovation from drones, from UAV, aerial drones, vehicles, but to many other drones, that's happening. Uh, but also in all other defense-related areas. That is happening uh, from large-scale investments and joint ventures to startup ecosystems and such. Mm -hmm. We also have seen that in some of the logistics operations and some of the infrastructure, there's resilience, maintenance, uh, and investment in some of the new projects or some of the projects which maintain what has been destroyed or rebuild what has been destroyed. There's also some in construction, uh, mm -hmm. especially IDP housing, uh, rebuilding clinics, and so on. Mm -hmm. um, who is investing? Uh, it tends to be uh, companies which have already had experience with Ukraine because they have people on the ground, they understand that the risks uh, you know, might be not as high as it might look from outside. Whereas it's very difficult for new companies which have not had a foot in, in the door in Ukraine previously to come in. So we have a little bit of polarization. You know, let's say American companies which have been present in Ukraine, they continue to invest, and some of them are even grown. It's not true for everyone, but uh, it's a pattern. Whereas companies which have not been in Ukraine, they are not investing, and it's likely that they will wait until the war is over. Mm -hmm. As you mentioned, military sector. Let me quote uh, from the, the New York Times. It was written recently. Military production drives the economy. But in regular times, there would, be, would not be such a demand for this particular production. But it doesn't happen that today we develop this direction, but uh, tomorrow we stop it. it, it well, so, so, so there are two it, effects like uh, which are direct for economy. One, we will be able to export some of these weapons and munitions and technologies outside of country. Not all of them, because some of them will be strategic and there are actually restrictions on what is tradable and what is not tra tradable. Mm. But many of those will, will be uh, possible to export. And before the war, uh, before the full-scale invasion, Ukraine ex uh, you know, provided weapons and maintenance of weapons uh, outside of Ukraine. So that's, that's an export revenue. We mm. are known as a country for grain and for IT. Some people say grain and brain. Uh, but now it will also be mill tech. So it will be a third major. I mean, we have other, we, we have other uh, industries, but uh, these are often the industries in the news. Mm. 
Mm -hmm. um, the second aspect is that there are technological spillovers uh, into civilian sector. For example, uh, you know, everyone has seen drones by now, which can uh, identify a person, an enemy, or a tank, um, and drop a grenade or a, some kind of munition mm. on them. And today, it, it might even be possible to put a picture of an object, or even a person, an AI will try to find it and target it precisely. Now, mm -hmm. uh, of course, you can try to deliver coffee with that. Uh, so instead of uh, dropping munitions, you can, uh, you know, you can have a customer. There could be a profile on the customer. Could be location, and a coffee shop can deliver coffee with uh, with AI drone, the powered drone. But uh, you also can do more things. Uh, you can do life saving operations. That there would be drones which will deliver and administer uh, life uh, life critical medication to people who are experiencing an attack, for example. And they can do it themselves. So there'll be spillovers. This idea of identify, uh, ident identifying the target and delivering the payload uh, during the war, it's of course a military payload, but you can deliver products and services and you can administer them um, in civil uh, use. So I think uh, that's going to be a booming market. Yeah. Uh, does it mean that in, in, in the future Ukraine will become a country with a well-developed military, military industrial complex? I think so. Uh, it's... In my because view, it's some inevitable. Some people say, think that it's, you know, when it's war, it's okay in a war condition, but uh, in the uh, peaceful time. It's but the threat war. will not disappear. So the problem with Russia is that Russia is mm -hmm. such a large country and such a brutal country culturally in so many areas that uh, it necessitates um, a kind of management or governance which is also brutal and authoritarian. Uh, so Russia will stay there and Russia will be a threat as long as it stays imperialistic and it will stay imperialistic for quite a while. It will take decades to, for the culture, to, for sort of reckoning, self-reflection, mm. to change the attitudes of people. So it's not just Putin, it's tens of thousands of people uh, pressing buttons to send missiles to kill civilians and it, mm, tens of millions of people cheering behind that. So mm -hmm. it's not so easy to say that tomorrow, after the war is over, the threat will disappear. No, the threat will not. Unfortunately, the threat will also be there for Baltic countries, for Poland, for Central and Eastern European countries, and elsewhere in, in the world, from, C from Syria to Libya to you name it. So Russia you know, has been doing uh, conflicts throughout the world, and that's how they run their foreign policy in Africa, through Wagner, for example. Um, even in Latin American, they influence, uh, sometimes through cyber warfare, even in the US. So things are there, they will stay there, and uh, military defense complex will be needed in Ukraine because that's where the experience is, that's where the people are who uh, have the knowledge needed to continue to maintain defense against Russia. And mm -hmm. we think about defense more generally, it's not just brick and mortar, it's not physical necessarily, Weapons. It's also cyber. It's uh, propaganda, anti-propaganda. It's yeah. communications. It's uh, sabotage. It's uh, undermining political processes. All that is at play. Mm -hmm.